On a quiet night in January 2018, a brutal crime shook the small village in Mayandeng near Kuruman, Northern Cape. A 15-year-old boy stabbed his teacher to death in his own home, allegedly over a failed grade. The victim was Kingston Via, a 42-year-old Zimbabwean national who had moved to South Africa in 2008 to pursue his passion for teaching. He taught creative arts and English at Bosel Middle School, where he was well liked by his colleagues and students. The perpetrator was a grade 8 pupil at the same school, who had not yet collected his report card and did not write all his exams. He blamed Via for his poor academic performance, even though Via was not his subject teacher. On the night of the murder, the boy went to Via's house armed with a knife and stones. He started throwing stones at the windows, breaking them and causing a loud noise. Via's friend Zeki Mangei, who was staying with him at the time, tried to stop him from going outside, fearing that the boy might have accomplices. But Via wanted to talk to the boy and calm him down. He opened the door and stepped outside, where the boy apologized for his behavior and said that he was under the influence of drugs. He promised to come back with his parents and fix the windows. The situation seemed to be under control and Mangei went inside the house. But a few minutes later, he heard fear scream. He rushed out and found him lying on the ground, bleeding from a stab wound. The boy had attacked him with a knife and ran away. Mangei and some neighbors loaded Via in a car and drove him to the nearest hospital. On the way, Via asked Mangei to pray for him, but died shortly after arriving at the hospital, leaving behind a devastated family and community. The boy was arrested and charged with murder. He appeared in Moti Bistad Magistrate Court, where he showed no remorse or empathy for his actions. He was later sentenced to 12 years in jail a verdict that many considered too lenient for such a heinous crime. The murder of Kingston Via raised questions about the safety of teachers in South African schools, the influence of drugs and violence on young minds, and the justice system's response to such cases. It also highlighted the plight of foreign teachers who face xenophobia and discrimination in their host country. It is a senseless tragedy that robbed a good man of his life, a passionate teacher of his dream, and a village of its hope.